Alright guys, so before we get stuck into the sanding, let's have a look at the three main things that you're going to need for this process. Sandpaper and two different types of sanding blocks. The sandpaper that I use is a waterproof sandpaper. This is 600 grit um, and this is an aluminum oxide sandpaper. You can tell because of the red color. Um, I will add links in the video description to a couple of different types of sandpaper so you, don't, you guys don't have to chase it around too much. Um, and then the first sanding block you need is the, the rough sanding block. And this is basically anything that's you know, comfortable to hold and has a, a nice flat surface on the bottom. This is my like specially made sanding block that I use. I have another video about this on my channel. You don't need to make this. Um, it's useful, but you can just get away with a, a nice you know, wooden stick that has a flat bottom on it. And then the last one is the finish sanding stick. And this is what I use to do the final satin finish on the actual blade. And basically this could be anything that just has one section of it beveled to almost an edge, like a knife blade. Now, before you get started, I recommend going through and cutting up a bunch of sandpaper into strips that are the right size for your sanding block. Now, I recommend after you've cut up the sandpaper that you keep it somewhere where it has labels because if you have a look at the backs of the sandpaper, after you've cut it up, most of them don't actually have the grit on there. So if you mix them up, it'll be impossible to sort them out. Okay, so here you can see how I've got my finishing bench set up. I have my sandpaper separated out into the different types. I have my knife blades. I have the water that I'm gonna use for, for sanding. I always wet sand, uh, and this is basically just tap water with some dish detergent mixed in. Um, I have a piece of wood on which my knife blade will be supported. I have my two sanding sticks and I have just a rag to wipe the water and grit off the blade so I can see what progress I'm making. Alright, so let's get started with our first knife blade. You can use this exact same process regardless of how rough the blade is. You just have to start at a different grit, at a coarser grit. So if you've done all of your um, blade beveling with a file, then you'll want to start maybe with uh, 120 grit sandpaper to get the really coarse uh, file marks out and then move upward from there. I'm going to start at 400 grit, but the principle is exactly the same, so let's get started. Now I am going to clamp the knife onto this piece of wood so that the edge is just in behind the piece of wood here, and this does two things. This supports the blade and stops it from flexing, and it also stops you from accidentally stabbing or slashing yourself with the blade, because even though it's not sharpened, it's still quite sharp, like the edges of the steel are quite thin, so you could do quite a lot of damage to yourself. Um, and to clamp it down, I'm just going to use an F clamp. Okay, so I've got my sanding block, I'm going to grab a piece of 400 grit paper, put that on the sanding block. going to wet the sandpaper, just dunk it in your container, and then we're going to start at a 45 degree angle to the blade in the direction of the plunge. So we'll start sanding like this. And that piece of sandpaper on that side is tapped out now, so we need to change to the next side. I've done a bunch of sanding at 45 degrees across the blade like this, and now you can see these scratch marks that have shown up. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to keep going with your first grit of sandpaper, whatever that may be. So again, if you're filing um, your bevels, then you might want to start at 120 grit. If you are using a grinder, then you might be able to start higher. But whichever grit you're using first, you'll keep going until you can't see a single scratch that's not at that 45 degree direction on your blade. So you can still see I've got scratches here, I've got scratches in here near the plunge, and I've got some here near the tip. I'm going to keep going until all those scratches are gone, and then at that point we'll switch grits and start sanding in a different direction. So let's keep working on this. Now 
each piece of sandpaper doesn't last for very long. Don't don't spend hours trying to get the you know the complete life out of one piece of sandpaper. You're much better off using it while it's sharp than switching to a new piece. Um, it's not very expensive, uh, and your your time is worth more than the sandpaper, so to speak. So you can see we've got less scratches now. There's still two or three here and just a couple in there. So we're gonna keep changing sandpaper and chasing those scratches. I don't know if you can see them, but there are still just a few tiny little scratches in here. Don't, don't be tempted to just leave a tiny scratch to catch on the next grit, because as you go up the grits, removing scratches becomes progressively harder. So you want to make sure that all of the scratches are gone and all you can see is just the grit marks from your sandpaper. That looks pretty good right now. So what we're going to do is move on to um, sanding the Ricasso here at the same grit. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now we're going to move on to the next grit. And for me, I'm moving from 400 grit to 600 grit. Um, you don't want to skip grits too much. So if you're at 120, then you want to move up to 220 or 180. And then from 220, you'd go to 400 to 600 to 800, so on. Um, there is a, a progression of grits that you should use. When you change grits, you also need to make sure you change direction so you can tell which grit marks are from which grit. So I'm changing from 400 to 600. So I'm just gonna alternate the grit direction. I'm gonna start sanding at 45 degrees the other way. So now if I stop, you can see that there's like a cross hatch. So I'm just going to keep sanding at 45 degrees going this way until I can only see grit marks going this way. Right, so the blade itself is now at, at a clean 600 grit finish. So now I'm gonna move on to sanding the Ricasso to 600 grit. Right, so at this point we've got a nice clean 600 grit finish over the entirety of the blade and the Ricasso. So this is the point at which I would stop and go away and heat treat the blade. Because right now this blade is not heat treated. Um, the sanding is easier when the blade isn't heat treated, but you don't get quite as nice a finish on soft steel. Um, the finish comes up nicer on hardened steel. So at this point I would go away and heat treat the blade and then come back and I'll walk you through the rest of the process. Before heat treat, I sanded this blade to 600 grit. Now that we've heat treated it, I want to sand it again with 600 grit because the steel is harder, which means that the individual grit isn't going to bite as deeply as it did when the steel was soft. So 600 grit on soft steel and 600 grit on hard steel is a bit different. So to make up for that, we want to sand it again at 600 grit to make sure that we don't have any um, grit marks in there that are hard to get out with the higher grits going forward. Okay, so now that we've got a nice clean 600 grit finish again after heat treat, what we're gonna do is move up to an 800 grit finish. And then after doing the 800, and this will sound a bit weird, but after doing 800, we're actually gonna come back down to 600. And the reason that we do that is we're gonna sand 800 this way to get rid of all of these 600 grit sand marks. Then once we've got like a reasonably clean 
straight 800 grit finish. We're going to come back with 600 grit and just do straight pulls. And the, the 600 grit scratches will show up very easily over the 800 grit finish and you'll end up with a very nice, clean, straight satin finish. So again, when we're at our highest grit, we're going to sand back and forth straight along the blade rather than at an angle. Okay, so now we've got a nice finish with only 800 grit scratch marks in it. So what we're going to do is take the blade off our table and we're going to wipe all of the water off it. Get it nice and dry. And then clamp it back down. Then we're going to switch to our other sanding stick, the one with the, the knife edge. So you're going to grab a piece of 600 grit sandpaper, fold it over the knife edge, like that, and then line it up with your plunge line and just do straight pulls. So you're not touching, you're doing a pull and then you take it off and you move it back. And you're going to keep doing that until you just have consistent grit mark going straight. You'll have to change the sandpaper often, so you have to just roll it over the edge a little bit to expose a new piece of sandpaper. You can use your finger along the edge of the piece of wood as a guide to keep each of the drawers going in the same direction. So, now we're going to move on to the Ricasso here, and exactly the same thing, just make sure you don't go down onto the blade. You want to pull it up before you get to the blade. And we're done.